Hey guys and welcome to the fifth episode of the Fantastic Film Factory, the channel that is all about prop building and camera movie magic. On today's episode I'm gonna show you how to make your very own sticky bomb launcher from Team Fortress. Let's get started. Since I wasn't able to find any useful blueprints or high resolution pictures of this prop, the first thing I did was to make my own blueprint using a program called Inkscape and one of the low resolution pics I found on the internet. After that, I printed the self-made blueprints in a life-size dimension so that I could base the different parts I needed to build on the measurements of the blueprints. The first thing I built was the magazine. As a basis, I used an old film can I found and which had exactly the needed size. To give the magazine an appropriate width, I filled the space between the cans with some circles I cut out of styrofoam. To give them a perfect round shape, I attached the styrofoam circles to a drill using a long screw and spun them against the file I clamped to my workbench. After this treatment, all of them were perfectly round. To recreate the side wall of the magazine, I cut a strip with the needed dimensions out of an old piece of sheet metal, wrapped it around the styrofoam circles and covered the two endings with the two film can halves. Next I had to make those tiny detail pieces at the sides of the magazine. Therefore I bought a 3mm thick PVC mat at my local Home Depot. I then made a paper template for every detail piece traced them onto the PVC mat, cut them out and glued them in place using hot glue. I also formed the ring around the magazine into a round shape using a hair dryer so that it would stay in place. I began with a few coats of grey primer and continued by painting everything with three coats of a dark green spray paint. Since I didn't want the prop to look factory new, I used some black acrylic paint mixed with a lot of water and a cloth for weathering. As a finishing touch, I simulated scratches by brushing some silver spray paint on the relevant edges. I also cut a small groove into the top of the magazine where the barrel could fit through later on. I continued by making the barrel system. I wanted this part partly functional, or rather to be able to cock the prop. So the first thing I did was to buy one PVC pipe which had the same diameter as the barrels on my blueprint and a second PVC pipe which fitted exactly into the first PVC pipe I bought. I then cut both of them to length based on the measurements of my blueprint. When you have a closer look at pictures of the sticky bomb launcher it can be noticed that the barrel gets thicker in the magazine area. To recreate this effect, I bended two pieces of the PVC mat into shape by using a hairdryer and glued them together with hot glue. Next, I had to cut two different slots into the barrels, one for the bolt handle and one for the extractive bullet casings. I decided to use my hand mill and some wooden templates for this job to make the edges as smooth as possible. As a bolt handle, I used an old screwdriver part which was simply screwed in place. Now that the mechanism is almost finished, I continued by making the wooden handles. Therefore, I took a thick piece of wood and used my paper blueprints to cut the wood into the rough shape of the handles. Now I used my files, rasps and sandpaper to give the handles the right shape and a smooth look. I then attached the back handle to the pipe with two screws. I had to cut a third slot into the inner barrel so that the inner barrel could still move freely. Now that the mechanism could be moved, I built a small box out of plywood into the inner barrel exactly at the place where the bullet casing would sit later on. This was done so that the casing wouldn't glide around when the mechanism is pulled back. After I was done with that, I made the extractor mechanism for the casing based on the same nail clipper principle I used when I made the combo gun prop from 1886 The Order. The link to that video will be in the video description. When the nail clipper was glued in place, the mechanism was ready for a first test. To make the bullet, or in this case the grenade casing, I simply took an old pill canister which kind of had the right shape and painted it. 
To prevent the inner barrel from flipping around, I built this small metal thing, which was attached using the same screws which hold the back handle. I then attached two springs to the rear side of the metal piece I made and bolted the other two ends to a wooden end cap I made, which should seal the back side of the barrel. This way the barrel will be held back by the springs and won't flip around. When I was done with that, I worked on the two connection pieces between the magazine and the barrels. Since I had my life-sized blueprints, they were fairly easy to make. First, I made some paper templates of the two parts I wanted to make and transferred the shape to some thin plywood. I then cut them out and sanded them. As you can see, they fit on the barrel like so. The magazine is held in place using a long bolt with a suitable nut. Next, I made this round connection piece which is kind of a transition between the ejection chute area and the thinner rear barrel part. I made it using different sized hole saws, sandpaper and a power drill uh, which got misused as a kind of lathe. After all this was done I began to work on the trigger system which is basically a big plywood piece with a slot at the top and a thinner trigger shaped plywood piece which sits in the slot and is attached with a small nail. I also put a crumbled rubber band into the small gap between the two parts so that the trigger jumps back to the natural position once operated. After that the trigger was basically finished. I then worked on the front muzzle pieces which were basically just different sized plastic canisters and PVC pipes which were stuck together and connected with some custom made wooden transition pieces. Those pieces were made the same way as I made the first connection piece between the magazine area and the rear barrel part. I then disassembled the almost finished prop to prepare it for painting. To make the paint stick to the PVC pipes, I sanded their surface with some sandpaper and cleaned them using some alcohol. I then painted everything with three coats of shiny silver spray paint and after that I applied several different weathering coats to every part. I also treated the handles with some dark wood stain. As a last step, I added some extra detail pieces, such as the scope, which was cut out of a thin sheet of zinc and the metal handle at the side of the magazine. After all that, I had a cool looking replica of the Sticky Bomb Launcher from Team Fortress, which still looks cool on close ups and slow motion shots. To be honest, there are a few things which I don't like about this prop and uh, which I would do in a different way if I would make such a prop again. For example, I'm not really happy how the color of the handles turned out since the wood I used for them was pine. I would prefer it if I would have used harder wood for them. I'm also not really happy with the wet ring. But after all, it was a really fun project and I learned a lot while making it. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas what I should build next or if you have any questions about the prop and the build itself. I'll try my best to answer them. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and remember to always stay creative. See you next time.